Welcome to the deep dive. Today we're doing something a little bit different. Oh. Yeah. It's a deep dive uh, crafted just for you, actually. Yeah. Our listener has sent us a ton of information on uh, on Sun Pharmaceuticals Industries, LTD Financial Reports, yeah. right. news articles, analyst takes the whole nine yards. Wow. And wants to know what's really worth paying attention to with this company. Interesting. Well, when you've got the largest pharmaceutical company in a market as big as India, there's definitely something going right. Right. So Sun Pharma, they're big in India, but like what exactly are they doing? Right. These sources mention everything from just making generic meds to developing these complex APIs, which I'm not going to lie, sounds a little bit like alphabet soup to me. Uh, right. So APIs are active pharmaceutical ingredients. Okay. Essentially the raw materials that make medicines work. Got it. So Sun Pharma isn't just involved in manufacturing and marketing these final products. They're in the creation of those core components as well. So almost like a like a farm to table restaurant but for pharmaceuticals. Precisely. So they've got vertical integration going on there. Right. That's got to give them a pretty serious edge especially with the generics, right? Absolutely. But the sources also talk about branded generics and even specialty meds. Yeah. What's the strategy there? Think of it as risk mitigation. Generics are their base offering affordable options for widely used medications. Branded generics, that gives them a bit of a step up, mm -hmm. often with added benefits or marketing behind them. Okay. And then you have the specialty meds, which are a little bit more high stakes, targeting more niche conditions, requiring more specialized expertise. Yeah. Sun Pharma is kind of playing across the board, mm -hmm. making them less vulnerable to fluctuations in any one specific area. That's a pretty smart approach, but it also sounds really complex. Oh, yeah. Are they spreading themselves too thin? It's a valid concern. But their financials suggest they're managing it pretty well. Take their debt, for example. Hmm. They're actively reducing it, which is a good sign for any investor. Yeah. That does sound promising. Hold on. How much debt are we talking? And what kind of debt? Is it like paying off a pesky credit card or more like, you know, restructuring a massive loan? It's more about managing different types of debt strategically. Hmm. You know, long-term loans, short-term borrowing. Okay. Just to ensure financial stability and flexibility. Hmm. So by reducing their overall debt burden, they're kind of freeing up resources for other things. Makes sense. So less debt basically means more options, more wiggle room in your budget. Exactly. But what about their bottom line? Right. The sources are highlighting this impressive, like, 23.4% CAGR over the past five years. Yes. Now, I know that stands for compound annual growth rate. Mm -hmm. But for our listeners who maybe aren't financial whizzes, can you unpack that a little bit? Well, imagine you put money in a savings account that earns interest. Okay. Key AGR is basically calculating the average yearly growth of your savings, okay. factoring in the interest you've earned on that interest. So in Sun Pharma's case, a 23.4% CAGR means they've consistently grown their earnings at a rate much higher than your average pharmaceutical company. So they're not just growing, they're growing at a phenomenal rate. Yes. Very much so. But hold on, there's also a con that was flagged in our sources, and that's slower sales growth. Like, they've only seen about 10.8% growth over the past five years. Yeah. How do, we, how do we reconcile these two seemingly contradictory bits of information? That's where things get really interesting. You see, we're looking at two different metrics here, sales growth and profit growth. Okay. So while sales have been growing at a bit of a slower pace, profits have skyrocketed suggesting that they're managing their costs incredibly well. How interesting. Perhaps they're streamlining their operations, negotiating better deals with suppliers, or optimizing their manufacturing processes. So it's like they're making more money with what they're already selling. Precisely. It could be a sign of increased efficiency. And strategic cost management, which is just as important as that top-line revenue growth, shows they're not just focused on selling more, but on selling smarter. That's a really good point. It's not always about how much you bring in. It's about what you do with it. Absolutely. But we can't completely forget about those slower sales figures. Of course not. Like the generics market is getting super crowded and there's bound to be some pressure on those prices, right? Oh, absolutely. Competition is fierce. You've got new players coming onto the scene all the time. Right. And we can't ignore the impact of global economic slowdowns either. Of course. Which, as we know, have affected healthcare spending all over the world. So it's like they're running this marathon yeah. where the terrain keeps changing and there are more and more competitors joining the race. 
It's a very apt analogy. Yeah. Really highlights the dynamic nature of this industry. Mm. But even with all these challenges, they've still managed to achieve this impressive profit growth. Yeah. Which suggests that they're really adaptable and resilient. Speaking of resilience. Yeah. The sources also mention this diverse product portfolio as a key strength. Oh, absolutely. So how does that fit into this whole picture of growth and adaptation? Well, having that broad range of products from your very basic generics to those very specialized medications acts as a buffer against those market fluctuations. Mm -hmm. So if one area underperforms, others can kind of compensate. You're right. It's a classic diversification strategy. It's like they're not putting all their eggs in one basket. Yeah. <laughs> It makes a lot of sense in an industry as unpredictable as pharmaceuticals, yeah. but I am curious, how does this product diversity impact their financial performance, you know, concretely? Well, for one, it allows them to tap into a wider range of markets okay. and cater to a greater variety of patient needs. Yeah. This can lead to more stable revenue streams, right? which of course is very attractive to investors. And probably gives them a bit more leverage when negotiating with suppliers and distributors too, since they're not reliant on just one single product line. Absolutely. But you're right. There's always another side of the coin. Yeah. Managing such a diverse portfolio logistically, yeah. it's got to be a nightmare. Right. But the sources seem to indicate they've built a really robust infrastructure to handle it. Okay. You know, they've got these manufacturing facilities across the globe, a sophisticated supply chain, and a strong management team. So they're not just like throwing darts at a board. They have a system in place. Precisely. But let's shift gears for a second and talk about their shareholder landscape. Right. The sources mention this increasing feedy holding, which I know has something to do with big institutional investors. Yeah. But can you explain what that means for someone who maybe isn't a Wall Street guru? Sure. Imagine a group of investors okay. with very deep pockets, mm. like pension funds, insurance companies, mutual funds. Okay. They're constantly on the lookout for companies with strong growth potential. Gotcha. When we see an increase in feedy holding, it means these institutional investors are putting their money where their mouth is, betting on that company's success. It's like a vote of confidence. Precisely. A sign that they believe the company is moving in the right direction. Exactly. That's definitely a good sign. But it's not just about these big players, right? right? Because the sources also point to a high percentage of promoter holding. Yes. Meaning the people closest to the company are also heavily invested. Exactly. Shows that those who know the company best, often the founders or those really early investors, yeah. have a very strong belief in its long-term prospects. They're not just putting their money where their mouth is. They're putting their heart and soul into it as well. It's almost like they're not just running a business. They're building a legacy. Yeah, it's a very powerful statement. But, you know, we can't get too carried away with the good news here. Of course not. The sources also mentioned some recent regulatory orders for violations. Seems like even they're not totally immune to missteps. It's important to remember that every company, even the wildly successful ones, mm -hmm face challenges and setbacks right. is how they respond to those situations that truly matters. It's about that accountability and transparency, right? Absolutely. I am curious, though, what type of violations are we talking about here? Hmm. Is it something minor, like a compliance issue, or is it a little more serious? Hard to say without looking into the specifics of each case. Yeah. But it is important to note that regulatory scrutiny is a big part of the pharmaceutical industry. So not necessarily a red flag, but something to definitely keep an eye on. I would agree with that. But let's zoom out for a moment, look at the bigger picture here. Okay. What does all this tell us about Sun Pharma's overall position in the market? Well, we've got a company with a solid foundation in India, right. a global reach, and that very diverse product portfolio. Mm -hmm. They've shown some pretty impressive financial performance despite being in a very challenging market environment. Okay. And they've attracted these major investors which, again, points to confidence in their future prospects. So they're a major player with a good track record and a bright future. Sounds like a pretty good investment opportunity. Now, hold on. Not so fast. Okay. Remember, we've only just scratched the surface here. There's a lot more to uncover. <laughs> all right. All right. I get it. Due diligence is key. Absolutely. But I am intrigued. Yeah. What are some of the things we should dig into next? 
Well, for starters, we should probably take a closer look at their R&D efforts. Okay. Are they investing in new drug development? Yeah. What are their plans for getting into those specialty medications? And what about the competitive landscape? Right. Who are their biggest rivals and how do they stack up against them? Those are all excellent questions and we will be exploring them further as we dive deeper into this source material you've provided. Okay. I am ready for the next layer of this onion. Let's go. Lead the way. All right. Okay, so we've kind of established that Sun Pharma is like this global pharmaceutical powerhouse. Yeah. But I'm really interested in like what their future holds. Right. These sources touch on like their R&D efforts and their push into these specialty medications. Yeah. But it's all kind of fragmented. Can we connect those docs a little better? Absolutely. It's fascinating. They're not just content being a generics giant. Yeah. They're actively investing in R&D. They're looking at new therapeutic areas. Okay. And building a pipeline of specialty drugs. It sounds super ambitious. Yeah. But isn't developing new drugs like a completely different game than manufacturing generics? Oh, yeah. There's a ton of investment, years of research. Right. And like no guarantee of success. Absolutely. It's high risk, high reward. Yeah. But it's also essential for long-term growth in this industry. Okay. Generics are important, mm -hmm. but they're also pretty susceptible to price wars and competition. Right. Specialty drugs, on the other hand, often come with patent protection. Right. And higher profit margins. So they're trying to like balance that core business with like a long-term bet on innovation. Precisely. But what kind of specialty drugs are they focusing on? Right. The sources mention a few areas, but it's all pretty technical. Well, they've already got a presence in dermatology, neurology, and cardiology. Okay. But they're also exploring more niche areas like oncology. Oh, wow. And ophthalmology. Okay. And what's interesting is they're not just replicating existing drugs. Yeah. They're developing, you know, new formulations, delivery systems, uh -huh. even exploring novel therapies. That's super impressive. But it also makes me wonder. Yeah. Are they spreading themselves too thin? Mm. I mean, it's, a, it's one thing to make generics across these different therapeutic areas. Yeah. But developing new drugs in these highly specialized fields, right. it takes a whole other level of expertise. Right. But remember, they're not starting from scratch. Okay. They've got this strong foundation in pharmaceutical manufacturing. Right. A global network of researchers uh -huh. and a growing portfolio of patents. Mm -hmm. And they're not afraid to collaborate. Okay. With other companies, research institutions. So it's like they're building an ecosystem of innovation. Exactly. Rather than trying to do everything in-house. Oh, yeah. But, okay, let's talk about, you know, the elephant in the room here. Mm. Competition. Okay. The sources kind of briefly mention some of their rivals, but I'm curious, like, who are the big dogs in the generics market and how does Sun Pharma measure up? You've got your global giants like uh, Tiva Pharmaceutical Industries. Milan, okay. Sandoz, they're all fighting for market share. Okay. And then you've got your regional players in India, uh -huh. other emerging markets. Mm -hmm. Sun Pharma's advantage really lies in their strong presence in India. Okay. Their cost-effective manufacturing yeah. and that growing portfolio of specialty drugs. But aren't these global giants also investing in these specialty drugs? Yeah. How can Sun Pharma compete with companies that have you know, much deeper pockets and a longer history of innovation. It's a bit of a David and Goliath situation for sure. <laughs> yeah. But Sun Pharma has a few aces up their sleeve. Yeah. They've got a deep understanding of emerging markets. Okay. A culture of, I guess you could call it frugal innovation. Mm. And they're willing to partner right. with other companies. They're not trying to outspend their rivals. They're trying to outsmart them. So it's not always about who has the most money. It's about like how they use it. Exactly. Let's shift gears for a minute and talk about their financial performance in a little more detail. Okay. I mean, we did touch upon their impressive shaggy R earlier, but what about other metrics like their dividend payout ratio? Right. The sources mention it's healthy. Yeah. But what does that mean for the everyday investor? A dividend payout ratio is basically the percentage of profits a company gives back to its shareholders as dividends. Okay. So a healthy ratio means that the company's making enough profit to reward their investors. Right. But also retaining enough to reinvest back into its growth. So it's this balancing act between sharing the wealth and fueling future growth. How does Sun Pharma's dividend payout ratio compare to other pharmaceutical companies? 
they're actually quite generous compared to their peers. Okay. Which is great for investors looking for, you know, income. Yeah. Suggests that they're confident in their ability to generate these consistent profits and reward those shareholders. That's encouraging. But I'm also wondering about their debt reduction strategy. Oh, great. We talked about how reducing that debt can free up resources, mm -hmm. but I'm curious about the specifics. What kind of debt have they been focused on and how's it impacted their financial stability? They've been strategically tackling both their short-term and long-term debt. Okay. Which has really strengthened their balance sheet okay. and improved their credit rating. This makes them a little less vulnerable to interest rate fluctuations right. and gives them that flexibility to pursue strategic acquisitions. Makes sense. Or investments. So it's like they're cleaning up their finances huh? to build a more stable foundation for future growth. Yeah. You know, I can't shake this feeling that we're missing something. Oh. I mean, we've looked at their financials, their R&D efforts, the competitive landscape. But what about the bigger picture? Right. What's their long term vision? Mm. Where do they see themselves in the next five, 10, 20 years? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Right. Unfortunately, there's no crystal ball. Yeah. To give us those answers. Yeah. But we can get some insights from the sources you provided. OK. For example, their annual reports often outline strategic goals, right. their expansion plans, and their vision for the future. So we need to dig into those reports to get a better sense of their long-term trajectory. I'm also curious about their leadership team. Okay. Who are the people leading this company and like, what are their track records? That's a very crucial aspect that we haven't really touched upon yet. Yeah. The quality of leadership can make or break a company. Right. Especially in such a complex industry as pharmaceuticals, we need to look at their experience, their decision making, their ability to kind of navigate these challenges. Before we do that, I do want to circle back to something you said earlier about Sun Pharma's presence in these emerging markets. OK. I know they're big in India, but what about other regions? Like, are they making moves into Africa, Latin America, Southeast Asia? Great question. And this brings us to a crucial part of their growth strategy. OK. They're not just happy dominating the Indian market. They've got global ambitions. So they're looking to become this like truly global pharmaceutical player. Yeah. But how do they plan on doing that? Right. Are they building new manufacturing plants, acquiring local companies, forming partnerships? Well, it's a multi-pronged approach, actually. Right. They've right. already established a presence in several key markets through, you know, organic growth right. and strategic acquisition. It sounds like they're playing a high stakes game of global chess. It does, doesn't it? But expanding into new markets, that comes with its own set of challenges. Right. You've got regulatory hurdles cultural differences, mm -hmm. intense competition from local companies. It's not just about conquering new territories. Right. It's about adapting to different environments yeah. and building sustainable businesses in these diverse markets. That's that totally. sounds incredibly complex. It is. But that's also what makes the pharmaceutical industry so dynamic and exciting. Well, I'm hooked. Good. We've covered so much today, from their R&D to their global expansion plans. We have. But there's still so much more to uncover, right? Oh, absolutely. We've only just scratched the surface. But I think we've built a really solid foundation for understanding their journey, their ambitions, right. and all the challenges they face. Definitely. Now I'm even more eager to dig into those annual reports and conference calls yeah. to get a deeper understanding of their long-term vision and you know the people behind it right but what are some of the key takeaways from our conversation what should our listener keep in mind as they continue to explore you know all things sun pharma i think the biggest takeaway here is that sun pharma is a company in transition okay they're evolving from this you know generics focused player mm -hmm into a more diversified pharmaceutical company right. with global ambitions. Okay. They're investing in R&D, moving into new markets, building that portfolio of specialty drugs. Yeah, they're not just resting on their laurels. Yeah. They're actively trying to shape their future. Precisely. But like we discussed, this transformation comes with its own set of challenges and risks. Right. Like they need to navigate this complex and competitive landscape. Yeah. Manage their resources, make those strategic decisions that will ensure long term success. Exactly. Almost like they're walking a tightrope. Yeah. Between their current business and their aspirations for the future. That's a great way to put it. But what's really remarkable is that they're doing it with a sense of purpose uh -huh. and this commitment to innovation. Absolutely. They're not just following the trends. 
Yeah. They're setting new standards. Right. Really pushing the boundaries of what's possible in this industry. That's a company worth watching. But we've only just begun to unravel, you know, the complexity of their story. There's so much more to explore. Yeah. And I'm sure as we go deeper into that source material, mm -hmm. we're going to gain even more insight into Sun Pharma's journey and their vision for the future. So we've really gone deep on Sun Pharma, their financials, their R&D push, their global game plan. But like, what does it all mean for for you know, for our listener. Well, that's where the real work begins, right? right? We've given you all the pieces, but it's up to you to assemble that puzzle. Yeah. The annual reports yeah. and the conference call transcripts you gave us, those are gold mines of information. Okay. Yeah. Those can be pretty dense reading. Oh, uh, yeah. But if I'm like trying to decide, you know, should I invest in Sun Pharma or even just like, where do they fit in the big picture? Mm. What should I be looking for in those documents? Look for clues about their long-term strategy. Okay. Are they prioritizing organic growth acquisitions? How are they dealing with those challenges of, you know, going into new markets? Right. What are their plans for, <laughs> for balancing those generics with the specialty drugs? So it's not just about the numbers themselves. It's about understanding, like, the thinking behind them. Exactly. What are their priorities? Where are they placing their bets? Exactly. And pay very close attention to that management team. Yeah. What's their experience like? Have they successfully navigated, you know, similar situations in the past? Right. Do they have a clear vision for, for the future? It's funny. We often focus on, you know, the products and the financials, but the people at the top, they're ultimately steering the ship, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so. And don't stop there. Yeah. Read industry analyses, follow financial news, you know, talk to experts. The more you learn, the better equipped you'll be to make your own conclusions. So it's like, we've given you this map, but you still got to chart your own course. No two journeys are exactly the same. Precisely. And that's the beauty of it all. Yeah. There's no right answer. There's no guaranteed outcome. Right. It's all about weighing that evidence, uh -huh. considering all the different perspectives, oh. and then making an informed decision. I love that. It's not just about, you know, blindly following the crowd. It's about thinking critically yeah. and forming your own opinion. Exactly. And that's what makes investing so fascinating. Right. It's a constant learning process, a journey of discovery. Well, we've had a pretty fascinating journey today, haven't we? I think so. Exploring Sun Pharma's past, their present, and, you know, their potential future. We have. We've uncovered their strengths, their weaknesses, their ambitions, their uncertainties. Yeah. We've looked at their financials, their strategies, and, you know, the people who are driving their growth. Absolutely. But most importantly, yeah. we've given you the tools and the insights to continue exploring on your own. Remember, knowledge is power, mm. especially when it comes to investing. Yeah. Informed decisions, those are the key to success. There you have it, folks. Our deep dive into Sun Pharmaceuticals Industries, LTD. A company with, with a really remarkable story. Yeah, a story of innovation, ambition, resilience. It's a story that's, that's still being written. And we can't wait to see what the next chapter holds. Until next time, happy exploring.